Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I will be starting my fourth series where I'll be focusing more on idol groups that I want to deep dive into. They might be huge groups that are really known, they might be underrated groups that don't fit into my why am I worried about series, or they might be groups that I've disbanded. The topic of the series will depend on what I think is the most important to know about the group. So it's kind of gonna be a guide, but as I said, more of a deep dive. Today I'll be talking about a disbanded group that a lot of older fans may know about, uh, while newer fans might never have heard about them before, and that group is, as the title says, Nine Muses. I will be going over their careers, all the member changes, and the mistreatment the members were subjected to. So let's jump right into the history of Nine Muses. In April of 2008, Star Empire revealed that they were planning to debut a new girl group called Nine Muses. The CEO, Shin Ju Hak, also revealed that the group would have a rotation system and the members would be active in multiple fields like singing, acting, and modeling. Their debut lineup consisted of Jaekyung, Rana, Bini, Lee Sem, Eunji, Sera, Yueren, Hiemi, and Mina. A lot of the members were previously working as models, so Nine Muses got marked as model dolls before their debut. Nine Muses had their debut on August 12th, 2010 with a single album, Let's Have a Party, with the title track, No Playboy. The song peaked at number 56 on the charts, but sadly, the debut was not a success. Prior to their debut, they were very highly anticipated, and the Korean public had really high expectations. But once their debut stage went live, they got mocked for having a bad debut, and even got the title of a horrible debut. Even though, personally, I don't even think it was that bad. They also were accused of being copycats of Girl Generation. Just a few months later after their debut, Jaekyung left the group to focus on her modeling career and was replaced by Hyunna later on, and the group promoted their second single, Ladies, from their debut album. In December of that same year, Nine Muses won the Top 10 Singers Award at the Korean Culture Entertainment Awards. In February of 2011, Star Empire announced that Rana, Bini, and Yurin had all left to focus on other things like acting, modeling, and studying. But just three months later, Yurin rejoined Nine Muses, just before they made their comeback with their single Figaro. Figaro came out on August 18th, and the highest they got on the Gaon chart was at number 66, lower than their debut song, and got under 300,000 download sales. When the promotions of Figaro had started, Star Empire were thinking about changing the name of Nine Muses to Sweet Candy, because it would be confusing for the group to have the name Nine Muses but not have nine members. But then later on, the company decided to not change the name as they had plans to add two new members in the near future. The group came back with another single called News on January 11th, 2012, with one new member, Kyungri. The song got higher on the Gaon chart this time, with a peak at 36, and the song was downloaded more than 837,000 times. Then on March 8th, that same year, Nine Muses released their first extended play, Sweet Rendezvous, with a single ticket. The album peaked at number 6 on the chart, selling over 4,200 copies, and the title track peaked at number 33 on the Gaon chart. In January of 2013, a new member, Song Ah, was added to Nine Muses, meaning that the group would now once again have nine members. They came back with their second single album on January 24th of 2013. The album was called Dolls and had a title track with the same name. <laughs> This song would be the highest charting single up until this point, sitting at number 17 at its peak. They followed that up with the second extended play, Wild, with a title track of the same name. The album debuted at number 4 on the Gaon chart and sold over 5,600 copies and peaked at number 22 on the digital charts. Then later that year, on October 13th, Nine Muses released their first studio album, Prima Donna, with the title track, Gun.
the album peaked at number 7, the title track Gun peaked at number 16. They then released a digital single Glue on December 4th of 2013 and that one peaked at number 24 on the Gaon chart. At the start of 2014, Star Empire announced that Lee Sam and Eunji would be leaving the group due to their contract expiring, and they would possibly be adding more members later on. Then in June, it was revealed that Sera would not be renewing a contract and would be leaving the group with plans on her solo activities and starting her own agency. The company said Nine Muses would be coming back in August, but that didn't happen, and instead a project group called Nasi Nasi debuted. The group had Kyungri along with Seya's Kevin and a singer Sujin. Then in January of 2015, it was announced that Sujin would be joining Nine Muses along with a trainee called Kumcho. Then on January 23rd, the group made their comeback with a new lineup of Kumcho, Hyemi, Hyuna, Kyungri, Hyemin, Mina, Songa, and Sujin. The comeback was an extended player album called Drama with the title track of the same name. <laughs> The album peaked at number 4, selling almost 8,000 copies, and the title track peaked on Gaon Chart at number 13. In July of 2015, Nine Muses released their fourth mini album, Nine Muses SS, or Summer Special Edition, with the title track Hurt Locker. <laughs> This album peaked at number 5, selling over 7,800 copies, and the title track peaked at number 32 with over 170,000 downloads. They then came back on November 24th with the album Lost, with the title track Sleepless Night. The album peaked lower in the past albums, at number 10, and the title track peaked at 26 with 76,000 downloads. In February of 2016, Nine Muses held their first concert, Muse in the City, at the Wap Pop Hall in Seoul Children's Grand Park. A few months later, in early June, it was announced that Yurin and Minha would be leaving Nine Muses since they decided not to review, renew their contracts with the company. Nine Muses then formed a subunit with four members, Gungri, Hiemi, Sujin, and Kumjo, for a summer comeback. They had their debut with the name Nine Muses Amuse, or Nine Muses A, on August 4th, 2016, with her single album Muses Diary. <laughs> The promote of the album with the title track Lip to Lip, the album peaked at number 4, selling over 10,500 copies. On October 4th, 2016, it was revealed that after 6 years in the group, Hyunna would be leaving Nine Muses as she did not renew her contract. Nine Muses would remain as a 4-member group as Songa was taking a break from Nine Muses to pursue her work as a DJ. In June of 2017, Nine Muses came back with her 6th extended play called Muses Diary Part 2 Identity with the title track Remember. The album peaked at number 5, selling just over 8,000 copies, but the song was only downloaded at around 17,000 times, a huge jump from their other comebacks. Nine Muses held their second concert, Remind, in late July of 2017 at the Blue Square Samsung Card Hall located in Yongsan. Just a few days later, on August 3rd, they released their repack album, Muses Diary Part 3, Love City, with the title track, Love City. The album peaked at number 12, selling around 4,500 copies, and the title track failed to chart completely. On February 10th of 2019, Nine Muses disbanded as the result of Sujin, Kumjo's, and Hiemi's contracts expiring, while the other two members, Kyungri and Songa, had graduated from the group. Nine Muses released their last single, Remember, and held a fan meeting to say goodbye. Nine Muses disbanded without ever winning a music show. Nine Muses had a lot of potential. They had good lucky members, talented singers like Sera, for example, and they had good songs. They had all the components of a successful group. So why did Nine Muses not make it as big as other groups at the time? Let's dive into that. So what went wrong? There are a few things that made it harder for the girls to get big. Let's start with their debut. As I mentioned before, they were highly anticipated as a group. But when they performed their first live stage for their debut, they were nervous and lacked the confidence. And due to that, their live stage was marked as horrible. 
In my opinion, it wasn't even that bad. They were singing live, dancing in high heels, and in pretty uncomfortable outfits. These days, K-pop is a lot more strict and more perfect. But back then, it was really normal to sing live and maybe not hit all the beats perfectly. So to expect a group to debut in a perfect way is unfair. As I also mentioned, they got attacked for copying Ghost Generation. I guess it's because there were nine members, because that's all I can really find in common with them. But that made them get a lot of anti-fans or people didn't want to look into them because they thought they were copycats. Another thing that the public said is that the girls seemed cold due to the fact they were mostly former models. And that was somehow off-putting to fans. I don't even know that what that means, but that's what some people were saying. A huge part of why they didn't make it as big as they could have is the lack of promotions and the inconsistent comebacks. For example, in 2012, they had two comebacks early in the year and then went silent. Same with 2014. There was no group comebacks, only a unit project, Nasty Nasty, in August. The year Nine Muses had their debut, girl groups like Sistar, Girls Day, Miss Say, and Orange Caramel, for example, were all debuting that same year. The K-pop scene moves fast, as you pro guys probably know. So if you want to stay relevant, you have to stay in the spotlight and you have to have comebacks and go on TV shows and more. But Nine Muses just couldn't do that. And once you're not a rookie anymore, the struggle just doesn't go away. In the next few years after Nine Muses debuted, some big names like A Pink, Stellar, XID, Crayon Pop, AOA, Ladies Code, and so on all hit their debut. In an industry that moves fast, you have to think ahead. Of course, this is not the girls' fault, this is completely on the company, because they're the ones that decide when the girls can have a comeback. They provide the songs, the choreo, and so on. It's on the company. Another issue is, of course, the constant member changes. I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but I want to get a little into it in this video because maybe you haven't seen any of my other videos. There's multiple reasons why members leave. It can be health issues, not having passion for it anymore, but a lot of the times it is the company's fault in some way. It's just as simple as that. Lineup changes can ruin a group, especially when it's as constant as it was with Nine Muses. The graduation system is flawed, it just doesn't work with K-pop. Fans want a stable group, but if members keep coming and going, it just gets too confusing and not worth the effort if your favorite might just leave any day. Another issue that I haven't touched on my videos before is when fans start comparing lineups. I found this thread on Reddit where a Redditor just says that one lineup of their group was the best. How does that make the other members feel? Both members that left the group and joined afterwards. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I feel like this opens the door to such toxic views on the group that worked so hard from their debut. The Documentary Nine Muses of Star Empire Back before the group debuted, the company agreed to allow BBC to film and follow the process of debuting a girl group. And then the documentary came out after the girls had debuted, and K-pop fans were shocked. This documentary is actually a really good watch, and I highly recommend that you watch it. But I will be going over things in the documentary that were just not okay. The company treated the girls horribly, and it showed behind the scenes of how the girls were being mentally abused by Star Empire managers and the CEO. The first topic, as I mentioned, is how the girls got mentally abused by their managers, CEO and Silas, and so on. At the beginning of the film, Inji is talking about what kind of girls her members are. When she gets to Sera, which used to be the leader at the time, she talks about how she's the one who gets scolded when a member makes mistakes just because she's the leader. And it doesn't even matter if it's her fault or not. We see an example of this just 10 minutes later in the documentary where they dig into Sera for not being a proper leader. <laughs> Sarah ends up being replaced as a leader by Rana because the company just didn't think she was good enough. Sarah seemed really upset. She understood why they replaced her, but she was clearly really distraught. Another thing they do throughout the documentary is mock the girls. While they were practicing, the chief director points out Kiemi, talks down to her for not doing the moves right. And in the same scene, he just starts talking down to them. Kyung says that she's not feeling well and that she was debating whether or not she should go home. But then he just said no without even asking how sick she was feeling. Yet again, the girls get scolded later in the film by their stylist. Another time, they're practicing and the CEO shows up and then later starts talking to them like they're dumb. And even said one of the girls just looked stupid out of nowhere after giving her a slight compliment. And then after they watch the stage, he treats them horribly, basically calling them nobodies. <laughs> Yeah. 
에너지를 투자해야지 스타 되는 거야. 잘거다 하자고. 할거다 하고. Staff also likes to blame the girls for their failed debut, talking badly about them behind their backs. While the staff made the girls watch the debut stage over and over, they sat outside talking shit about them. One of them said outright that the song was bad and they knew it. In another meeting they had with their CEO, the staff said that their girls can't even sing, even though they have been complimenting some of the members just earlier in the documentary. A while into the film, after they have had their debut, the girls were being driven by their manager, and from my what I understood, they got into a car crash. This wasn't made too clear in the documentary, but according to All K-Pop, on September 8th of 2010, the car they were in hit a guardrail and they ended up going to the hospital. They did actually get into another car crash a few years later, so it was hard for me to find information on the accident in the documentary. But due to this accident, they were sore all over. Jaekyung goes home and falls asleep, missing practice. And yes, they did have to practice just after getting into a car accident. The CEO calls Jaekyung and she finally picks up as she has been sleeping all day and he starts yelling at her. After the phone call, he looks at nine muses that were practicing and he just yells, Jaekyung is out. She got kicked out of the group and was replaced so fast with Hyuna. In another practice after the accident, Hyemi's shoulder was hurting, but she was too scared to say anything because she knew the staff wouldn't care. There's a lot of things in the documentary that just don't sit well with me. When the staff and the CEO were planning out outfits for the Nine Muses Dream Concert appearance, he asked the staff to make the member's skirt even shorter. If you look at the skirt, it was so freaking short it made me gasp. There's also the scene where the manager literally just shops for a new member. Hello. 안녕하세요. the day before the filming of the video of No Playboy, Sera gets sick and ends up having to go to a hospital for treatment. And then she shows up the day after for the envy shooting and the jacket shooting, very sick, but has to act like nothing's wrong. The girls keep saying things are very concerning. Three different members say that they can't wait to get free from the group. <laughs> This is not even a year into their debut and they already want to leave because they're suffering. On another occasion, Sarah is talking to Lee Sam after Lee Sam had a breakdown and Sarah talks about how she's feeling af empty after they had their debut. <laughs> And then there's other heartbreaking things she says at the end of the documentary that I'll play right now. I'm <laughs> 내 가족마저 희생시켜 가면서 하는 이 일을 굳이 내가 왜 했을까? So, I don't know how the culture in Korea is when it comes to smoking, but the staff and the CEO were smoking around the girls on multiple occasions. Like, is this just normal? Are we not supposed to be protecting their vocal cords because they're, I don't know, idols? Another thing that wasn't in the documentary, but people say that was in the trailer or it was associated with the documentary, was this clip where the CEO of Star Empire is slapping Sarah with some kind of object, and then she just takes it like she's used to it. 
There's one more thing I want to mention because I'm sure some people are going to question as why the film crew didn't do anything while they were filming the documentary. In an interview, the director actually spoke on that and he said, quote, The agency allowed us to film the documentary under two conditions. That they want our production staff to work as the girls' managers while filming. The other thing is that we don't speak up against what the agency would decide for the girls, end quote. On top of everything that happened in the documentary, there are so many other things that the girls had to go through. In June of 2013, the girls came onto an SBS show called Star Beauty Show, where they talked about how they had been following the paper cup diet. If you don't know what the paper cup diet is, let me explain. You have three paper cups and you fill one with rice, one with fruit, then one with meat or vegetables. The food cannot stand up from the cup and it has to fill the cup completely or be under the line. And that is your meal, three times a day. This can be very dangerous as this is not enough food for a hardworking idol. With a low calorie intake and not enough energy, it can put idol at severe risk. Apparently the girls did this for five months. Angie also once said that when she was in Nine Muses, she was only 44 kilograms, and she wasn't even the thinnest member at the time. The members had to wear maid outfits for a military fan meeting, from what I gathered, and the girls looked super uncomfortable. Although some fans liked the performance, Star Empire also got a lot of complaints about this. They have been forced to wear outfits they did not like on multiple occasions. In a YouTube video, one of the members, Sarah, talks about the time they were shooting the debut music video for No Playboy. Some of the younger girls were really uncomfortable with the clothing they were given, and you just see how upset Sarah got while talking about this. <laughs> You know, it was okay for me to wear stuff like that, but our magnets were, they were 18, and uh, this was supposed to be funny. I... So, uh, you might not understand what I'm feeling right now this is very overwhelming for me because they were kids <laughs> and they had a pretty difficult time filming this video and as a leader watching them cry made me cry like for an hour and that's how i was um kicked out from the position leader. The girls are also known for wearing really uncomfortable clothing in general that may malfunction while performing or reveal too much. The Star Empire employees, managers, and so on would also take photos with of the girls without their consent and even post it to their social media. Like what on earth? I don't even think that's legal. The staff and the CEO would treat members differently. Kyungri once said that when she would talk to the CEO, he would ignore her. And the CEO would give members gifts, but he never even treated her to anything. In a video interview, Sera talked about her time in Nine Muses and the real reason why she left the company. When her contract was off for renewal, Sera asked that the group would have more creative control and that there would be no more member changes. And due to this, she was kicked out instead. She talks about how idols and trainees are seen as replaceable. After trying a solo debut, she ended up in debt, feeling depressed, and even thought about ending her life at one point. I will play some clips from the video of Sera so she can explain herself what is wrong with the K-pop industry. There are so many trainees, so many artists, so many young people that want to get into this industry. So, um, they sometimes consider us as replaceable product. Like, I actually get questions like, uh, how much are you? You know, so, you know, if you are, if your value is considered low, you know, you can be replaced by someone that has higher value anytime. Mm, I think in K-pop industry, we don't take mental health seriously. Uh, I think it has something to do with K-culture itself. Like when you are 
mentally ill, you immediately feel ashamed. There are a lot of faults with the K-pop industry, as most of us know, but the way Nine Muses was treated was just horrible. I hope this sheds light on the horrible treatment of idols and also just Nine Muses, as they deserved so much more. I know sometimes group just don't make you big, and that's just the reality. But as I said earlier, Nine Muses had everything to become big. So if you have the time, please check out the Nine Muses and their members. I am also worried about the new girl group uh, under Star Empire called Arias. They had their debut back in October 2019, and they haven't had a comeback since. I might make a video on that, but I just wanted to mention them really quickly here, as I am sure someone will mention it in the comments. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video is pretty long, so I appreciate those who watch the whole thing because I'm passionate about making videos like this. Let me know what group you would want me to talk about next time and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.